Welcome back to the Simulator series. In today's episode, we're going to be creating the menu. Now, hopping directly into the studio, the first thing that we're going to do is start off by creating the GUI. So we're going to go inside of the star GUI, and we'll go ahead and duplicate the settings GUI. We'll then rename this to be called menu, and then of course we'll enable it. Now that we've enabled it, let's go inside of it, and we have this frame, and we'll go inside of here as well. Now inside of here, we're actually going to delete everything except for the UI corner as well as the title. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and resize this a little bit. Cool. And now that we've resized this, let's of course make sure that we center it as well. Awesome. So now that we have it positioned and resized, we can start updating the title text label. So we'll go ahead and update this by setting the text of it to say menu. And then we'll also just resize this a little bit as well. Now that the text label is looking good, we're going to go ahead and create another frame inside of here. And we're going to rename this to be called container. We'll of course resize this as well. So let's go ahead and make sure that we set this to scale. Now, I think that sizing is actually pretty decent, but let's go ahead and make sure that we perfectly center this. So 0.5 and 0.5, just like that. Now that we've done that, let's actually move this down just a tiny bit. We do need it to be centered horizontally, but I guess technically we don't need it to be centered vertically. Next, what we're going to do is throw a UI grid layout inside of here, and then we'll also create a text button inside of here as well. Now, for the background transparency of the container frame, let's set this to like 0.5 or 0.75, just so that we can easily see our text button, because these are going to have white backgrounds, which is pretty much impossible to see on top of another white background. Anyways, we're going to rename this text button to be called badges. For the text of it, we're going to set that to blank. And now that we've updated that, a little bit let's go ahead and start working on the ui grid layout so for the menu we want to fit about five buns inside of this frame so for the cell size on the x i'm going to go with 0.185 and on the y we're just going to go with one now that we've done that we'll also set the horizontal alignment to center and the vertical alignment to center as well we can then duplicate this bun a couple of times just to look at how the padding seems to be let's go ahead and make an adjustment let's go ahead and set the padding to scale so i'm going to actually set this to 0.017 and now that we've done that we can look at the padding once again and i think that actually looks pretty perfect Perfect. Anyways, let's go ahead and delete all of the buns except for one. And now we'll start working on creating this first bun. Now we really don't have to change any of the buns properties. Instead, what we have to do is add an image label inside of here. And we're going to rename this to be called icon. Now for the background transparency of this, we're going to set that to one for the scale type. We'll set that to fit. And for the image, let's go ahead and just temporarily use our trophy icon. Then we'll go ahead and resize it. Now I'm going to go ahead and start this off by going with 0.85 on both the X and the Y scale. And I think that looks pretty decent. We'll then go ahead and center this. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5. And now I think that's looking pretty good. Of course, if you want to make it larger or smaller, you can do that on your own. Next, what we'll do is duplicate the UI corner, put that inside of our badges bun, and we could probably increase this a little bit if we want to. So we'll set this to like 0 0.075 instead of 0 0.05. And now that we've done that, that's actually all that we have to do for that bun. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. We'll rename this one to be called pet index. Then we can go inside of here and update the icon image label with whatever image we want to use for this bun. Now, all the images that I'm going to be using here are mostly just for placeholders because I haven't actually had those buns created yet. But of course, you can feel free to use your own or use an asset pack or anything else like that. Now that we've created that bun, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And for the third bun, we're going to call this settings. Inside of here, we'll once again go ahead and update the image. We'll set this image to our lock icon. Then we'll duplicate this once again. We'll rename this to be called codes. Again, we'll go inside of here and update the icon image label. We'll set that to a pencil icon. We'll duplicate this one more time and we're going to rename this to be called teleport. Then we'll go ahead and update this image one final time and we'll set that just to the rebirth icon small for no particular reason. Now that we've created all those buns, we can see how they look. Let's go ahead and set the background transparency of the container frame to one. And now I think that all those buns and the entire GUI itself looks pretty good. So with that being said, we're pretty much done with creating this entire GUI. Luckily, for us, it was actually really simple. And now that we finished the GUI, we can go ahead and start scripting this. Now, in order to begin scripting this, all we actually have to do is script this on the client side. So we're going to go inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, inside of the GUI folder, and we're going to go ahead and create a brand new local script. Now we'll go ahead and rename this local script to be called menu. And real quick, what I'm going to do is open up the settings local script and just copy a couple of these variables. We'll then go back to the menu local script and paste them inside of here. Now we don't actually need the replicated storage, but we do need the player service. We don't need either of these variables, nor the remotes variable, but we pretty much do need the rest of these variables. Now I'm going to go ahead and update the GUI variable because the GUI that we actually want to get is the menu screen GUI. We then still want to get the frame. We still also want to get the container, but we do need to get at least one more GUI inside of here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the GUI variable, paste it above it. We'll rename this variable to be called left GUI. And the child that we want to wait for is actually called left. Now the left GUI contains all of our buns and currency label, which is on the left side of our screen. So we'll create a variable called left buns. And that's going to be equal to the frame inside of the left bun screen GUI that contains all the buns that the player can click on. So we're going to say left GUI dot frame dot buns. And now we have that frame. Now below our container variable, we're actually going to create another variable called GUIs, which is going to be equal to a table. Inside of here, we're going to store all of the GUIs that we want to be able to make visible whenever we click on a specific bun. So the first GUI that we want to be 
able to make visible is the badges GUI. And we're going to set that equal to player GUI, wait for child, and then we want to wait for the badges GUI. Then we'll put a comma after here, and then we can copy and paste this. Now the next GUI that we want to wait for is called pet index, and we'll update the key of this as well. Now we'll go ahead and copy and paste this two more times. Then after the pet index, we want to wait for the settings GUI, and we'll update the key of that as well. And then finally, we want to look for the codes GUI as well, and we'll update the key of that as well. Cool. Now that we've created that variable, we have all the GUIs that we want to make visible to the player whenever they click a button. So what we're going to do now is create a brand new function called setup buttons. That's not going to have any parameters. And what we're going to do inside of here is we want to loop through all the buns inside of our container frame. And if that button is clicked, we then want to check if a GUI exists. And if the GUI does exist, then we want to make it visible. So let's go ahead and start looping through all the children inside of the container. Now, if the bun is a text bun, then we know that we got what we're looking for. So we're going to say bun dot mouse bun one click, call and connect. We'll make an anonymous function inside of here. Now, whenever this bun is clicked, like I said, we want to check if the GUI exists. So we're going to say local GUI equals We'll then index the GUI's table with the button.name. And if the GUI does exist, then what we want to do is set that GUI to be enabled. So we'll set that equal to true. In addition to making one GUI visible to the player, we also want to make the menu GUI no longer be enabled when a button is clicked on. So we'll say GUI.enabled equals false as well. And now that we've done that, that's all that we actually have to do for this function. So let's just go ahead right below it and go ahead and call setup buns. Now, the one important thing that you need to understand here is that your buns should have the exact same name as your screen GUIs that you want to enable. If the buns have a different name than the screen GUIs, like let's say for instance that you created the pet index bun, but you put a space in between the word pet and index, then you're going to receive an error because our GUI does not have a space between the word pet and index. So of course, I'd recommend either renaming your GUIs, renaming the buns, or if you've made it this far in the series, you could probably alter the system a little bit to make it work better for you. Now, with that being said, the last thing that we actually have to do is listen for whenever the player clicks the menu bun, which is located inside of the left GUI. And when they click that, we'll make the menu either visible or not visible. So we have our left buns variable and inside of here, we actually have a bun called menu. Now, of course, whenever that is clicked, what do we want to do? Well, we want to set the enabled property of the menu GUI to the opposite of what it currently is. So not GUI.enabled. And now that we've done all that, that's actually all we have to do for scripting this. So we can go ahead and close that, go into our game and test this out. So what happened directly into our game, we can already see that the GUI is visible, but let's go ahead and click on the menu button over here. That should make it not visible and that works. Then let's go ahead and make it visible once again. So we can see that that's working perfectly. Then let's go ahead and click on our first button, which is badges. And we can see that they appear right here. So that's perfect. We can then go back to the menu again. We can click on index, see that the pet index appears. We can click on the settings button, see that the settings GUI appears. We can click on codes and see that that GUI appears. And then we can click on this button, which is actually supposed to be for teleporting, but we haven't actually created the teleporting system yet. So we'll come back to this in the future. So now that we verify that that works perfectly fine for us, what we're going to do is make this GUI no longer visible. So we're going to go inside of the star GUI. We'll then go down to the menu GUI and we're going to set the enabled property to fall by default. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we now have the menu system scripted into our game. I know it was a quick and relatively simple episode, but hopefully you guys did enjoy. And as always, if you did, make sure you smash the like button and feel free to support me on Patreon if you want to. Anyway, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>